Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about transitionings. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, as an experienced software engineer who has either specialized on front-end or back-end, how difficult was it for you to make the transition into a full-stack engineer? It was actually pretty easy for me, uh, but it was mostly because I sort of I think I took the easy path to becoming a software developer uh, or uh, to become a full stack developer by today's means so I'll give you some thoughts on this, this are, these are just my personal thoughts on this there's like no industry consensus but I hope that some of the people who might be watching who are who have sort of the same background can see my point so the idea of back-end only development and front-end only development really in my opinion has come from that there are certain languages uh, within our industry that are really to in terms of tooling mostly mostly you know focused on doing back-end work or front-end work or so forth and the reason why that is is not because they haven't tried to be these like full stack languages but they simply haven't made a a success case out of being a full stack experience for the people who are doing the work now in my opinion the heavyweight champion of producing full stack developers historically has been php no question for me. Be before the days of SBAs and like everything was done with uh, JavaScript frameworks and stuff like that, there was a time when most of the web, and it still is, like I think it's almost like a third or something, but that's as, as far as I understood. Don't t this 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 is as data, so don't like quote me on it. I think that's mostly due to WordPress and so forth. But a lot of the web is still running on PHP because a lot of websites are primarily server side rendered solution like types of home pages. The good old days. And PHP, I argue, was the best language and the best stack for doing that sort of work. Nothing was more convenient. If you wanted to make a web page and sort of like hook up a database and all that stuff, nothing would be faster and more like easy to learn or like get into as PHP. Java, for example, had has tried for in so many ways, and I mean C sharp as well to this point, but like Java is, I mean. JSF, JSPs, etc. So Java has tried, but you never, never, they have never really gotten to the point where that became like the default way of using Java. Because simply put, most people who wanted to just make a website found PHP to be simpler. And so I argue that the same thing is true today, but for a different stack, and that's going to be JavaScript and Node.js. If you are a Node.js, like a JavaScript developer, I think that you are on average more equipped to become a full stack developer, sort of out of the box, than most people who just focus on, say, C sharp back. I mean, Ruby, it doesn't really matter which other language you pick because most of the other languages are not really, they don't really have an ecosystem that is as accessible for both back end and front end. They always sort of lean towards one thing over the other, if that makes sense, because they have usually different sorts of focuses. I hope that makes sense to you. And But in JavaScript land, with Node.js, uh, that is actually, in my opinion, the perfect full stack language. JavaScript is, in my opinion, at the very least. The, like, I, in my world, JavaScript is the new PHP. Or it's even better. It's like the next generation of uh, development when it comes to like this kind of, you know, base setup. This is like the thing that you should pick, in my opinion, if you're not in any way looking for specific technical requirements or something like that. It's just the It should just be the default, in my opinion. One part is because, as I said, it can. It's the if you have to have JavaScript in many cases to make a modern front end application, and the back end stuff. Well, a lot of the, there's a lot of synergies between having a full stack, like a back end in JavaScript and a front end in JavaScript. Like the synergies are enormous, and no other language has that. Not even PHP, because as I said, back in the day it was mostly static stuff, server side rendered stuff. That's not no longer the case. So for me. 
doing the transition, I started as a Java developer, focused only on Java, with one exception, and that was that I wanted to be a full stack developer long term, but I had to start somewhere. So I started with Java, learned Java, studied it for, I think we, we were doing it for a few years. And then I realized that, well, another part of the the application development process is to do the front end. And back in those days, I had only really learned how to do, like set up a server, make like a REST API and work with unit testing and all of that good stuff. But then I also, we took a few courses, simple courses in like front end stuff, like you should make a form, be able to submit it, the sorts of obvious boring things that you might do, right? And I realized that in order to be able to create a full application, you sort of need this stuff as well. So I got into JavaScript and then I would, this was when Node.js first came out. And then when Node.js started becoming a thing and I realized that, hey, I can actually write the server side logic as well together with like the front end and it's all the same sort of language and so forth. Uh, the transition became almost seamless and I'm truly grateful, actually, that I started with Java. Well, I, not only Java, I've done a lot of different programming languages, but Java was the one that I took my education in. The reason why I'm happy about that is because I feel like I got both, uh, the bo both of the best parts of uh, like a full stack experience. Because the problem that I argue with Node.js and even PHP and so forth is that there's not really a heavy community around quality level, quality development, computer science, and like these sorts of really more hardcore engineering perspectives. It's more about personal productivity, tooling, etc., etc. So by starting with Java and then like kind of discovering JavaScript and Node.js, I actually learned that it's almost like I stole the best parts about Java and Java development and f figured out how to actually apply those learnings in the Node.js and the JavaScript ecosystem. And I still believe that that is probably the reason why I got to where I am today, uh, where I sort of have a fairly, I have a fairly strong, at least I feel that way, a fairly strong understanding of full stack development because I realized that the, like the, once you learned JavaScript, you basically get front-end and back-end for free. The only thing you really miss is like these more die-hard concepts because if you only know, say, JavaScript and you haven't really learned how to work in any other language, it's not that you can't learn the same sort of thing. It's just that it's the, the ecosystem is really focusing so much on the sort of traditional things that you find in the more like the, the older languages. That's at least my experience. So what I want you to take away from this is that I actually found transitioning from back and only to front and only, or oh, and like then becoming like a full stack developer, to it was a, f I mean it's always tough to learn a new thing, but once you started, well, once you understood, well basically the only real challenge was CSS. Good God, CSS was horrible when I first started. It was st I still super painful. Well, it's not painful today, but it was super painful. It was just I was so hell bent on learning everything about you know being a real full stack developer because I argue that if you're going to call yourself a full stack something something, then you should at the very least know how all both parts work fairly well so that you can produce on par results with someone who has who has a specialization. You don't have to be like a master level of the thing, but you should know it well enough. And so that was a bit of a challenge, but because, as I said, because there are these, I actually picked, uh, I went from Java to Node.js and started working with that. I think that helped me a lot because once I started working with JavaScript, I realized that that stack is almost made for full stack work. Just as PHP it was, it was probably one of, if not the best choice for full stack work back in the day. And because there was such a great community of people where like there's, t in JavaScript specifically, uh, there's tons of resources for front end development. There's also tons of resources for back end development. If you just want to know how to set all this stuff up, the one thing that was missing, uh, is missing still, is that more computer science engineering focus, if that makes sense. It's bad, It's getting better, but in my days that, that was non-existent because it was so fresh, everything was just about tooling and frameworks and stuff, so forth, and to a certain point it's still the case, right? And so by 
being a backend developer first and learning all the you know all the concepts about like die hard backend development the transition was actually very simple it was a bit of a chance to learn css i will completely admit but honestly i'm pretty happy that i made that change and i don't think that you should be afraid to do it yourself because Trust me when I say this, guys. There are things in, say, front end or back end or like whatever that might be a little bit complicated. But if you learned one or the other, I promise you, you're smart enough to learn both. And my pro tip, if you want to be a full stack something and you're doing that, if you're interested, take a look at JavaScript or PHP. It doesn't really matter so for, so much because the entire ecosystem is very well suited for full stack work. Have a great day.